Hey guys, it's Lisa, and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to make over um, a few items, and we're going to start with this wreath. Um, I thrift these wreaths all the time or get them in an estate sale, and uh, usually they look kind of shabby like this one does, and um, and dated. And so I'm just going to start by taking everything that doesn't belong off this wreath. Uh, and I'm even taking the pine cones off because I kind of want a fresh start here. And anything that looks cheap, um, I cut that off also. There was some plastic and I couldn't tell if that was part of the wreath or if it had been added, but I didn't like it on there. So um, I'm taking all that off also. So doing all this alone and um, and fluffing a wreath will make an incredible difference in it. So once I get all this off, then I'm just going to fluff this up so I can tell uh, where it needs filling in. And then in fluffing it, I'm finding some more uh, things that I need to cut off. And some of these are a little hard to remove. Uh, but like I said, I'm just fluffing this up and you'll be able to see that wire form behind it in places. I hope you guys are having a wonderful Thanksgiving and I want you guys to know how very grateful that I am for you guys. When I'm counting my blessings today, you're definitely one of them. Now you can you can take just about any uh, regular green wreath, even if it's kind of a cheaper looking one, and uh, make it uh, updated and give it a fresher look with very little trouble. So I'm just uh, wiring some of these, uh, wrapping some of these uh, in with the wire. Uh, and But for the most part, I'm holding uh, these little things in with, uh, with hot glue. So this is just little sprigs from uh, various picks and I'm, what I'm trying to do here is add some lighter to this and uh, add some, uh, some different textures. And just adding textures and, and uh, various shades will, um, will update this a lot. So these are just kind of frosted um, evergreens and then uh, and then I'm going to add some uh, lighter greens to this and some softer textures and uh, and like this that I'm adding here I don't really know what to call this uh, but I don't really consider this a Christmas greenery uh, but it, it's going to work to add some texture and as long as your uh, your main greenery here is an evergreen greenery then uh, it's still gonna have that Christmas look and feel. So um, just add some wispier um, florals and like I said, just some different textures and shades and that will be enough to, uh, to update this and you're just kind of filling in where your areas are more sparse. And I like to uh, try to evenly distribute my like if I had uh, five or six of this particular one, then I would try to kind of space them out throughout the wreath just so that it has more of a uniform look. But as you can see, hot glue is plenty to hold this in place. Uh, just make sure that where you add your hot glue, it gets good contact with the evergreen. And then now that I have the textures that I want in here, then uh, I have a phlox recipe where I flock a tree, and I used to do that, uh, but I've learned that um, no matter what recipe you use, uh, those tend to really shed. So um, I've just decided this year that I'm just gonna add uh, the frosted look by adding paint, and I've tried spray paint. Uh, that's just not a realistic look. It just doesn't, you don't get good coverage and then you don't get any buildup on the ends of your evergreen. So I'm just taking some chalk paint here and you could use just a cheap white paint. Uh, but I'm just dipping it in and having quite a bit on my brush and then I'm just kind of 
uh, tapping it on the edges of the uh, greenery. And, um, and I just, I like the way this looks. Now, you could take this a step further. I haven't added texture to this, but you could actually add some texture and make it look like more build, build up of snow. But I feel like just putting plenty on your brush and trying to really concentrate on those ends uh, will still make it look like snow. And I was happy with the look that I got from this one. And you can just keep adding until you get the right amount of uh, snow look to this. And even if you let it dry and you're not the happiest with the amount that you got and you want to add some more, then any more that you add is just going to add uh, more texture. And so you can just kind of keep adding until you're happy with the look that you got. You could make it where it was mostly white, and that would be pretty also. But I thrifted these bells this year, and these are antique bells. Um, and I knew that I wanted to use these in my home. Uh, but I just wasn't quite sure. So I decided that I was going to use this as a door hanger for my for my front door. So um, I'm just going to hang these little bells inside this simple wreath. I like to keep it simple. I don't want to add a lot of color. And that's why I'm using some wider um more dainty looking lace and i'm just going to tie these together and i placed them in there where i want them to hang and then that way i would know where to tie these uh, but i'm just going to tie these together and hang them from uh, from the top at the at the level that i want them to hang and then just tie a knot in the end and then cut that off um, and that will get um, that will put these where I want them to hang, and then I can go back and add a bow. And then I'm just going to uh, tie a simple bow on this one, because like I said, I want to keep this, uh, this look simple. And I could have painted these bells, but I just really like the look of uh, this antique wicker on these. So I hope you won't pass up any wreaths that you find. If if the uh, base of them is in good shape, then uh, then it really pays to get them. I, I avoid making wreaths a lot of times because by the time you buy a new wreath form, and you uh, get all the um, all the greenery, uh, all the floral that goes on it, uh, then I just feel like you have so much money in a wreath, and uh, it's just to me, it's just I don't feel like you can uh, come out that way in selling them. So, like I said, I don't make a lot of wreaths. But I do make these over, and then, um, as you can see, I added very little greenery to this, and um, you can get away with that when you're adding this snow look. So another item that it pays to collect, when you do purchase a new uh, Christmas tree, um, then um, I wouldn't save all the, the limbs on your old one, but I would certainly save some, especially some of the smaller ones, uh, because you can ma easily make a spray with these. So as you can see, I've just opened this up, and now I'm adding a little, um, a little floral to this. And again, I want to keep this one simple. Uh, and as you can tell, this wasn't a very expensive tree to begin with. Uh, but we can work with that by adding different textures to this. And again, I'm just gluing those in. I'm not worrying with wiring them in. I'm just gluing them uh, straight into my limb. But I always like to keep my floral here in the same direction as my uh, limbs are going. And for this particular one, I'm going to add some red to this one. And um, I know this is not something that I generally do. I usually stay away from brighter colors, but um, I just had these berries and I thought I would add them to the spray. I wasn't able to picture this spray in my 
in my end picture because um, it sold uh, while I was working on on the vignette. So I just went ahead and sold it. I thought about holding it back, but I know people are really busy right now and they're getting ready for their decorations and so I want I didn't want her to have to come back after it so I just went ahead and sold it uh, but now this is all that I've added to this is these little uh, frosted stems uh, and it's just parts from frosted stem just like with the other and now I'm just adding my uh, paint here to make a snow look on this and and when I do this, I'm also kind of dabbing. I'm not brushing on the berries, but I just kind of dab here and there on the berries. And, um, and then that will give this a totally different look. And like I said, a very, very simple way to make a spray, maybe to go, um, go underneath your outdoor lights or just wherever you think you might need a small spray some people hang these on their front door but if you talk to florist a lot of those instead of buying these you can buy these little uh these little forms here for these sprays uh without that the wire thing on the top uh but that gets kind of pricey and like i said you're better off keeping something that you would normally throw away. And a lot of florists actually do that themselves. They'll just save old limbs and turn those into sprays. So um, again, just as little or as much uh, snow look as you want on this. And because I added the berries, I'm gonna add some red in my bow here, but I'm gonna keep this one kind of simple also. So I'm using the burlap in the back and then this smaller wide ribbon in the front and i'm just going to make a double bow here and i do that by twisting the center and uh, so that i can keep that red on the outside and the smaller uh, more narrow ribbon actually on the outside uh, so i just kind of twist that center and make two uh, loops on each side and then I'm just going to secure that together with the wire and I'll use a pretty long piece of floral wire and um, and leave a long tail in the back so that I can twist that around my spray. And then um, the reason I like to leave that pretty long is uh, I can twist that together and I'll show you how I do that in a minute. Uh, but uh, I can twist that together to also make a hanger. But I just clip that off, and like I said, I'll just wire that together, uh, leaving the excess in the back. So I just spread this out. Once I get it uh, wired together, then I just spread this out so that the double bow shows, or the double loops on each side show. And, um, and then, once I do that, then I'm going to glue that, uh, the red ribbon, to the back rib and they're on the tail so that they don't try to separate. And then like I said, now I have that tail there that I can not only attach uh, to my spray, but I could also twist it to make a good sturdy uh, hanger for my spray. And now I'm just adding just a few little sprigs of greenery and some uh, and some berries uh, to the center of this little bow. So now as you can see, I'm just going to wire this around my spray and uh, just kind of twist that together in the back to secure it in place. And then I'm going to uh, just kind of twist both of my wires together and... Um, and to make one sturdy wire. So I'll just keep twisting till I get a good sturdy uh, wire and then make a loop and twist that loop, if that makes sense. So I just pulled that down to make a little loop, as you can see there, and then I'll cut the excess off. And that will be a good sturdy little hanger for my spray. 
And I don't worry that I don't have snow there on the back because that's not ever going to be showing. So if you feel better about adding snow to your back, then feel free to. Uh, I just didn't feel like it was necessary in this case. And then for the third item that I'm going to be making over, this is a Christmas tree that uh, I had last year and uh, just as an extra tree and I drilled a hole in this uh, four by four block or I guess that's a six by six um, and uh, made a good heavy base for it. Uh, but it's just a plain green tree, and I don't know, I feel like those are kind of drab. Uh, and this one also had some lights attached. Actually, it had colored lights, which um, didn't work last year. And uh, I don't care for colored lights anyway. Uh, so I took some wire cutters and cut all those off. Now, I don't recommend redoing a tree that is pre-lit. Uh, unless you want to keep those lights because it was really not fun to cut all that off. Uh, it took a while and it's hard work, but I did finish cutting it all off and now I'm adding some different textures of greenery. And I've just cut some picks apart. It didn't take many because I'm only using small sections and I'm gluing those back inside the tree. And again, I'm not worrying with wiring these. I just put plenty of glue on and make sure that when I stick them back in there, I get full contact with some of the greenery. So I just work these in all the way around my tree and until I feel like I have enough of this texture. So like I said, this is a really, really easy way to um, update um, some Christmas greenery and like I said a tree uh, if you have a tree that maybe it is in good shape but you feel like uh, it's a little dated and maybe too dark green then just uh, find some pretty uh, greenery and uh, cut it apart and just kind of fill in and build you some texture and some lighter uh, contrast in with it and uh, you'll be surprised at what a difference that it will make in your tree. And a lot of the more expensive trees uh, have different textures in them. They're not just one kind of greenery. So like I said, I just keep kind of uh, hot gluing and stuffing this in until I feel like all of my tree is uh, good and full. full. And, and I feel like the... Um, until I feel like the textures are, are evenly distributed. And you can use one kind of extra texture here, or you could use as many as you want. And I like to use the lighter greenery here when, uh, when my tree is so dark, even though I am gonna be adding snow to this one also. So like I said, once I get this full enough, uh, then I'll just use my paint and just start uh, adding my snow look. And I will say that uh, trying to do a tree uh, that is kind of over your head uh, is a messy job. I ended up uh, with paint in my hair and all over my face and glasses and my clothes. So this would be, if you can find a pretty enough day to do it outside, that would be great. If not, then just uh, make sure you have a good size drop cloth and you protect your clothing. And this is a little tree that you could decorate if you wanted, but if you didn't want to decorate it, it I think it uh, will be pretty just like this and won't even need anything on it. And then uh, for the last item that I'm going to be making over is a little basket um, kind of shaped like a purse that I thrifted. And I just thought it would be a good, um, a good little uh, place to do a floral arrangement for Christmas. So um, I like the basket look, but I wanted to, um, I didn't like this kind of orangish uh, stain here. So I'm just using some whitewash, and this is a Dixie Belle product. Uh, I did learn it's called whitewash glaze. 
And uh, although I liked the look of it, I don't know that it's, to me, doesn't seem like it's much different than, um, than a white wax on, ba on a basket. So I think either of those would work fine. And now I'm just kind of adding some different textures of greenery here. And I put some of the green floral foam in the bottom. And I didn't even worry with uh, gluing it down because I want to be able to change this out for different seasons. So um, I just put one in there that would fit pretty good. and um, But not so snug that I can't pull it out. And then, uh, like I said, I didn't worry with gluing it in because I just want to be able to. Uh, change my floral at floral out when uh, when spring comes and again I'm just um, keeping this one simple also um, some of these didn't have much of a stem so I had to add a little bit of hot glue to my uh, to my foam before I put it in uh, but uh, I can still just kind of pull that foam out and all this floral will be on it and then I can just put a new piece of foam in it for spring. So once I get this uh, the way I want it, uh, then, um, then I'm going to add a little snow to this one also. But now I do have to be a little more careful on this one because I don't want to get any of that paint on my basket. So I just kind of put some, added some of the paint to this one since I'm doing kind of a snowy theme already. And then I tied a little simple cloth bow on it and then that's all that I did for that one. Again, I wanna wish you guys a happy Thanksgiving and I hope you've enjoyed time with your family today and uh, reflecting on all of God's blessings. Hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in the next. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great evening and God bless you and your family.